Hello everybody, and this has obviously been one of the craziest shakeups in recent Rocket League history. One with all the esports teams and orgs being shaken up and leaving and stuff. And now the format's completely changing where we're looking at a very different RLCS than we were just a little bit ago. And I'm not going to discuss so much the structure of like how much prize money per event and how many teams and all that stuff because there's articles in that, there are lots of videos in that. But I want to discuss how this affects Rocket League as like a team building structure. Because beforehand we had two months, or two, two splits I guess you can say, you know, like two world championships a year. But now we have three majors and a world championship over the span of a year. And how does that really mess with like the off-season um, roster, may roster may mayhem madness? What do people call it? You know, like what, I don't know, I can't even think of it right now. But when all the teams are switching up their rosters, they're trying out new players. How does that really affect it? Because you don't really have those super defined off-seasons now. You, you obviously do have, you know, a little bit of time between splits, but they're not as long, meaning there are more windows to figure it out if you want to try a new player. But that also means there's, you know, less time if that player's, instead of spending an entire half a year on that team, if he's only spending, a, like, you know, three months, two and two months maybe, it's going to really change how, how the roster changes work, I think, because of that, like, nature of new seasons starting so often. A lot of times, you know, you might be like, Okay, we're not doing so great this season. We're not going to make it to Worlds. We're going to continue to give this guy a chance to see if he can impress for the rest of it. But now, if you fail to impress in, say, the fall split, and then the the, the winter one comes along, you might get rid of that guy quicker than you usually would because you're like, hey, everything's restarting now. Everybody's 0-0. Zero, zero. We're starting from scratch. We're going to switch it up because we want to win this split. So I think that'll be good to see that it's, it's um overall, I think, a good thing that we'll see teams be, be, maybe be a m bit more willing to switch it up and try to, you know, fix their roster instead of just sticking with a bad team if they don't have a chance. And uh, overall, I think it's awesome how the formats are structured with the amount of teams. I think it's really cool that they have like more teams in the fall split and then less teams in the spring split, but the fact that it's open qualification for some of it is really exciting because we'll, we'll get to see a lot of these, you know, impressive young teams come in and break out players and stuff that we might not see otherwise. For example, a few years ago we saw Team Echo Zulu really break out and have a great DreamHack performance, but after that it took them a while to make the Rival series and then they weren't able to make it into RLCS and stuff like that. We we wouldn't see that in this. this. We would have seen them play in, you know, at least one of these formats where they'd be able to get their chance at an extended period of time against high level competition. I think that's really exciting to see and hope for moving forward that we'll be able to see a lot more of the developmental progress of some of these players. And I, I love watching second tier esports. I love that there's someone fascinating me about watching young players try to make it or breakout players. Uh, it's kind of like with traditional sports. I live very near a AAA baseball team, and I love going there. Obviously, I think it's just fun to watch the game. But there's something fascinating about, like, you know, these players are trying to make it. It's kind of one of the reasons I think people love college basketball and March Madness, you know? It's it's entertaining sport, but people are constantly trying to make it in the big leagues. You know, it's not just for the sake of, hey, I already have a $100 million contract. It's really cool to see these players putting their hearts on the line and playing with that passion of really trying to make it to that next level. And the way these form this format is structured now, we'll be able to see that a lot more. And I don't know, there's oh, it's so cool. I love watching and learning about new players that we might not have seen before. And specifically with the Rival series, I felt like, you know, there's a lot of good talent there and that's where we see a lot of players get their start. And a lot of times, you know, if players do really well in the Rival series, they might get picked up. But by the end of the season, uh, you know, what did you really accomplish? No one really, uh, as far as fan like attention go, what did you really accomplish? You know, no one really knows your name unless they really follow the Rival series. But here you'll be able to get that exposure way more than you would have if you were just playing in the Rival series or some of the other tournaments. Otherwise, I want to talk about the weekly tournaments, the grid. How cool is that? I think that's fascinating that there are weekly tournaments now. Uh, one thing I'm really, really excited for is the fact that there'll be constant content throughout the year. There'll almost be no off time between the different events, if we're looking at like the uh, posts here, it looks like the one, like the fall major will end, sorry if you hear noise in the background, my dogs are sneezing. It Like the, the major for October ends right right at the end of October and be, like right at the beginning of November. And you know, maybe like two weeks later the next split begins, which is so cool that we're gonna be able to see so much content throughout the year. Almost content coverage, which is so cool. That's one of my favorite things about sports is that Nowadays, there's always constant coverage throughout the off-season. You know, the NFL Network, MLB Network, all this stuff, constantly dedicated to sports, even if their sport isn't in season. 
But with Rocket League, it'll always be in season, and I don't think we can ask for much more of that from as fans. I think it's really cool the way it's structured that teams will be able to, if you're playing hot for two or three weeks, you'll make some money. You know, you'll get a lot of money from some of these regional events, and even from the weekly events, it's so cool that you're able to earn the grid points there and earn some of that weekly, I believe it was $1,000 cash pool every week. It's fascinating. And obviously there'll be over four and a half million dollars of price pools throughout the season, which is great for the players. And I love how overall the community's becoming a lot more developed in like how they support Rocket League, I guess. We see a lot of these uh, main events from RLCS and we're seeing a lot of the other things like the Fusion Tournament and uh, the Brawl, which you're seeing on screen right now. And even the 1v1 scenes is seeing a lot of progress lately uh, with like Johnny Boy and stuff. So that's really fascinating that a lot of these players, you know, they're able to really make a living playing the game they love. And they've spent so much time getting good at it for our entertainment feel sometimes, you know what I mean? And so I can't wait for that. That'll be really exciting to see. Overall, I, I'm really excited for this season to get kicked off. Uh, it feels like August is forever away now, waiting for that to start. But in the meantime, I still got the Brawl to cover. I haven't watched everything quite yet. That's why you see the lower bracket matches here between E-United and Space Station on. Uh, I'm going to be watching through these, and then once I get to the finals, I'm going to be doing a live review. Uh, I'll, you know, watch the VOD in live. Obviously, it's not live anymore because that might happen a few weeks ago. But I'll be watching it for the first time and going through what I think of the teams and stuff as we prep up for this new season to come around. So everybody, Evan and Matt, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.